Hey guys, it's Danny, and today I am super excited to share with you a conversation that I recently had with Sarah Jenks. She is the founder of Live More, Way Less, and SarahJenks.com, and she is an advocate of self love, self care, self acceptance, and using fun and pleasure as key components to reaching your weight loss goals and more importantly, creating a life that you're really excited to be living. Now, Personally, I've been following her work for years. She really inspires me. She has given me quite a few aha moments of my own, which is why I wanted to introduce you guys to her or introduce her to you guys. Because I think when you're trying to reach a personal health or weight loss goal, it's good to hear different points of views from different people because you just never know what is going to resonate with you. So with no further ado, I bring to you my chat with Miss Sarah Jenks. Hey guys, it's Danny, and I am so excited to be here with Sarah Jenks. She is the founder of Live More, Way Less, and SarahJenks.com. And Sarah so brilliantly helps to guide and teach women how to live more right now in the exact body they are in, enjoying their lives, being present in their lives as a prerequisite to changing their bodies or to be even think to begin to try to lose weight, right? So in other words, she helps us to stop waiting on the weight and courageously begin to live the lives that we desire right now, whether or not we are in a pair of size six skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Danny, thanks for having me. It's so great to be here with you and your wonderful audience. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm excited to be sharing your work. Um, So, so much of the work that I do here on Clean and Delicious, it's really fueled by my personal journey with weight and weight loss and body image and just a lifetime of being in that, both successes and the struggles. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's a bit of a passion project. And like I mentioned to you, I've been following you for years. And I feel like for you as well, that this work is really a passion project. It's really not only do you study it and know it inside and out, but you have lived it and you have experienced it. So I would love if you could share with everybody a little bit about your personal journey with Mm -hmm. health and weight and that whole struggle and successes and Mm -hmm. how that has brought you to do the work that you're doing today. Yes. Um, Well, it's been a long journey. started a very long time ago. So I went to my first Weight Watchers meeting when I was 10 years old. And it was because I was being made fun of at school and I was for being chubby. And I just looked at the people who were getting the leads in the musicals and in the front row in my dance recitals and having boyfriends and thinking, okay, so that's the life I want. And so in order to have that, I need to lose weight. And so I thought that losing 20 pounds was my ticket to a better life. But for me, I wasn't one of those people who could stick to a diet. I could stick to a diet for like three hours and then (laughs) I would binge. And so I could never lose the weight. I wasn't a yo-yo dieter. I just was, I was just, could never do it. And so I was always so frustrated with myself because it seemed easy. Everyone made weight loss sound easy. All you had to do was just eat this, that, and work out and calories in, calories out. And I just couldn't believe that something so simple was so difficult for me. And how could I not like find the willpower to have the life I wanted? And it made me crazy. I really thought that I, something was terribly wrong. I was a huge failure. And, you know, I had a I had a great life, but I just, it always felt like there was something else available to me. And it wasn't until I had this crazy moment where I used to work in advertising and Dove Chocolate was my client. And I ate an entire bag of Dove Chocolate Promises and I'd thrown away the last four pieces. So I'm like, yeah, big win. Didn't eat the whole bag. <laughs> and I went and I fished the chocolate out of the trash like five minutes later and finished it. And it was in that moment that I just realized this isn't working. And I needed to find a different way to do things. And so I just gave up dieting. I'm like, well, I've been doing this for you know 15 years. It's not going to work. I might as well just finally give up. And I finally looked around and realized that I wasn't miserable because of my weight. I was miserable because my life was so boring and (laughs) 
just <laughs> shitty, you know? So I, um, I really worked on my relationship. I started taking dance classes. I, you know, meditated and got in touch with a spiritual practice. And all of a sudden I wasn't eating ice cream at 11 o'clock at night. I wasn't needing, you know, three chocolate chip cookies in the middle of the day to get through the work day. I wasn't, you know, drinking my face off every Mm -hmm. weekend to numb myself out for my terrible life. Um, And so I just naturally lost a bunch of weight. And that's when I started my company because I just realized that no one's really talking about this. Yes. Um, It was just so diet, diet, diet. And then since I started my company, it's been a really interesting journey because, you know, it's so interesting when we choose, I always tell myself, why did I choose the most difficult thing for me to be my work in the world? Mm -hmm. Like, couldn't I have just been an interior designer or a dog trainer or something that just wasn't going to be, you know, just the hardest thing for me? Um, So it's still been a journey and I have, I've had two kids in two years which has been insane. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so I have a two-year-old and a six-month-old. And, you know, my weight has just been like this. Mm-hmm. And so now what I'm really sinking into is that we have to learn to love our bodies regardless of where we are. And as women, it's so normal to gain and lose weight our whole lives. Yep. And my journey has been, it's like my body saying, well, do you love me now? Mm-hmm. Can you can you love me now? Mm-hmm. And just always deepening into that place of total love and acceptance, at, and at the same time, not ignoring taking care of my body. Yes, you know, just right. because we right. accept our bodies doesn't mean we be like, oh, I accept myself, and I'm never going to work out. I'm never going to eat well. Right. It's and learning how to work out and eat well in service of feeling good, and not in service of losing weight or changing the way we look. Right. Right. And. Also, a big part of my work is how can we use our relationship with our bodies and our relationship with food to show us what's out of whack in our lives? This is why I love your work so much. You know? Yes. Oh, thanks. Um, And because if you eat a whole plate of cookies, who cares? You know, life will go on. It's not a big deal. If you gain 10 pounds in a week, nothing bad's really going to happen. Right. No moral judgment around it. Right. It's a cookie. It's a cookie. It's a cookie. But... If you're eating the cookies, it means you're not doing something else. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you're avoiding the fact that your that your marriage is in a really bad place, or you hate your job, or you aren't as connected with your children as you want to be, or you're just completely stressed out. As long as we're eating cookies, we're not dealing with those really important pieces of our life. Yes. And that's what I care about because I feel like as women, we're so focused on not eating or looking a certain way that we're not spending enough time looking at what's actually going on in our lives. Exactly. I could so. not agree more. And I think so often, instead of dealing with what feels like maybe a problem that's too big or too overwhelming, or we don't know how to get to it, we, we then, you know, overeat something. And now we have another problem, right? Now we have the yep. weight problem or the body problem. And it's a great distraction from Maybe a little bit of the deeper work that needs to be happening, right? Exactly. But just like you're saying, it's there's not a lot of conversation. It's growing, but it, mm-hmm. a lot of conversation out there that's even in telling women that hey, there's a place to look. That actually your weight is a messenger, and it's coming with uh, new information for you about you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so- the weight is not the problem. It's the reason the weight is happening is the problem. Right. The weight is like the, a doorway. It's a messenger. Yeah. It's like saying, hey, can you come peek over here? Can you just, mm-hmm. we, can, we can talk about something. Yeah. <laughs> I've got exactly. something to tell you. Um, okay. So this couldn't be a better segue, right? So I was part of what I love about your work so much is you're so real. You're so down to earth and okay. you are a great communicator, right? You're, you're so good at like weaving your life into your message and uh, into you. your, so it's, it's like, it's, you're very inspirational and, you know, I find very empowering the things that you share. So you recently shared something on Facebook that literally rocked my brain uh, so much awesome. so that I had to, I created a whole video on my channel because it was just based on your blurb on Facebook, which mm-hmm. I'm going to read to everybody in a second. Um, and I literally had to, before we, I work with my husband, before we shot the video, I had to read it out loud, like, 
five or six times because mm. it evoked so much emotion in me that I couldn't get through it <laughs> without mm. like just getting very emotional. Like it touched me on such a deep level, right? Okay, and I know I'm not alone. I know this is so many other women. And by the way, guys, what I'm about to read you is <clears throat> basically the philosophy that is the core of Sarah's entire program, Live More, Way Less. So keep that in mind. There's the tie-in for you, okay? So this is what Sarah wrote on Facebook, the beginning of the year. So this is like January, you know, when resolutions and all that good stuff is happening. Mm. Okay. There's a cultural trend going on around beauty beyond size. Women all over the world are claiming that they believe their bodies are beautiful and that, and that they want to love their imperfect bodies. This is all great, but inherent in this trend is the belief that we need to think our bodies are beautiful in order to love our bodies. People everywhere tell women to strip down and find something beautiful about their naked body, and for a lot of that, us, that feels nearly impossible. So here's what's true. You do not need to think something is beautiful in order to love it. That was like a hello, right? It's so obvious, yeah. but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, I love my old grubby sweatshirt, not beautiful. Love my newborn babies, they look like little aliens. And I love my body, even though I don't think she's beautiful all the time. Mm -hmm. With 2016 underway, beginning of the year, and all of the pressure to lose weight that comes with that, I really want you to know that true health cannot be motivated by beauty or lack there of it. It can only be born out of love. Love for a body who gets you around, grows life, houses your soul, and allows you to experience this incredible world. She may not be beautiful to you yet, but she is amazing, and she deserves to be taken care of. Mm. I love that so much. Do you ever Thank just like you. hear something? Do you ever like read back and go like, damn, girl, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a particular, that was a good moment for me, for oh, sure. <laughs> it's, so, it's just so good. It's so profound. And I think that so many women, I mean, when I shared it on, in, you know, on YouTube, on Clean and Delicious, so many people wrote, it just resonates with them, you know, because there is this inherent collective belief system that exists for many, dare I say most women, that, you know, if I don't look a certain way, if I don't act a certain way, then I am not valuable enough. I am not worthy enough. I am not enough, period, for even my own love and attention, right? Yeah. It's like a complete disregard and it's a constant, I always say that this is where the struggle lives, right? That you could want to lose weight and not struggle with losing weight, right? Struggle, mm -hmm. the struggle comes from the part of ourselves that resists the isness of where we are, right? Mm -hmm. When we can just be with the truth of where we are and then work on that from a place of love and compassion, and then you're just on the journey. You're just on the journey. Right. So I am curious. I know that you speak to thousands of women around this topic all the time. So what would you say, where is this born from? Why do so many women have this idea and this belief system that value and worth is based on a certain way of looking or a certain type of behavior? Because I know that's a loaded question. It is. I know. You know, it's just part of our culture and the way it's been. And I think we're coming out of it. I you think know, so too. Thank God. But for um, years and years and years, hundreds of years, women were really here to look good and make children. And that was terrible, you know. Right. And, um, and, of course, like we were valued around like creating communities and all that stuff. But we're just in a new era and we're coming out of that phase and so we have to rewrite a lot of the rules. Yes. But we're on, I really think we're on the crest of it, you know? So I really try to like not make anyone wrong. It's not like the culture is bad. It's just that we're changing and yeah. we're evolving. And it's just so important to realize what is old mm -hmm. and what we are stepping into. And to realize as women... We need to value all the things that we do around, um, you know, still being a mother and taking care of our communities and, and working and, you know, doing great spiritual work and taking care of each other and just being lights in the world and being playful and all this stuff. 
And our bodies, we have to remember that they're, they're homes. They're not just posters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I've just been really needing to connect with the fact that I have organs and I make breast milk and I have a brain and I have a heart and there's just like bodies are cool <laughs> and we forget how cool they are because we're just so focused on our skin yeah. and the shape and I just have been thinking so much about when I turn on all of my senses you know when I really look around when I feel the air in my skin when I smell something when I breathe when I taste something I just realize that you know, God or the universe or evolution, you know, made our bodies to experience the world. Mm. They, our bodies weren't made to just look a certain way. They're literally built to experience pleasure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, how cool is that? And we miss that opportunity because we're just so focused on what we look like. And so we just shut down our senses. Yeah. Just be smaller. Right, it, which is it was such a great point. I mean, that automatically in my brain makes me think of like trying to follow a strict diet, how you're just automatically disconnecting from yeah. your relationship to you and your body in, in place, mm -hmm. you know, in other words, and then you're just trying to attach yourself to a set of rules or a, a system, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, my brain's going in different directions, but totally. I, I mean, it, it, there's so much to say about it, but it's true that there's so much. And I love how you're saying that, it's just, it's a different time and what used to work doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And I think for people, and I don't, I don't know what your age, I just turned 40, but in my age zone, it's interesting because you're, I was a part of an old way of thinking for a long time. Uh -huh. And so part of my journey is also, you know, disagreeing with thoughts that go through my brain. I always say like, just because you have a thought doesn't mean you have to agree with it. You know, right. like exactly. ideas and old systems that do not serve right? And to be, have the awareness that it can come up, but I, if it doesn't feel good or it doesn't serve you, just don't hold on, don't, don't attach to it and just let it have its way and be done, right? Yeah. And the thing that happens sometimes, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, I don't. If I don't say it out loud, it just, I leave. <laughs> um, is that we, a lot of times, good intentions are masked by an old way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, we'll say like, I want to look beautiful. I want to look beautiful. And we forget that we can take care of our bodies without the pressure to look a certain way. Yeah. Oh, like God, right yes. now they've been like so enmeshed. And when yes. I say, a lot of times when I say, you know, don't worry about what you look like. People imagine themselves like sitting on their couch for a month, eating cookies, not yes. doing anything. And it's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. You know, we can, we need to s like separate the beauty from the care. Yes, that's and, such a great point. Right? And we can still like want to look beautiful. Like I had such a good time today, like curling my hair and putting on some makeup, but it was, it was just separate from the worth. It was separate from the taking care of my body. It's almost like we have to compartmentalize everything a little bit. And not like throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. It's like, I'm removing that whole thing from my system. But then with that, we remove, you know, the drive to take care of ourselves and the drive to be healthy. Like those are all good things. It's just that they got messed up in our... You no, know, it's true. And I do think there is a miss, a, a very, you know, a misunderstanding for many women that acceptance means quitting, right? Like right. if I, and, and we're so afraid of not looking a certain way that we literally are like, oh, if I accept this, that means I'm not going to try to, to, to do anything about it or change or improve myself anymore. And I'm always sharing this as well, that acceptance is literally, it has to, you have to accept anything before you can even attempt to change it, right? Yes. Acceptance, yes. you can accept your body exactly the way it is um, and still work to do whatever you want to do with it. But you can't do it if you're in a constant state of resistance and pushing against. And exactly. more to the point that that made me want to think of is um, I've come to learn that to me, really weight loss or any health goal for that matter, it's really a journey of love and self-care. That is really what it comes down to. Yeah. If you struggle, in my opinion, with health or weight loss, it's really an invitation to 
continue to get to know yourself better, to yeah. continue to deepen that relationship, to have a more intimate, loving, understanding, caring, compassionate, kind relationship and interaction with yourself, right? Like so much Absolutely. of it begins with just being aware of that inner dialogue. Like how do you mm -hmm. talk to yourself when nobody is yeah. looking, right? Yeah. But what is that conversation and how does that fuel your behavior? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm right I there totally with agree. Right there with you. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody, well, a couple more, couple questionnaires. So yeah. with all, with women that you work with, would you say that there is one on, when people start to maybe dive into the work a little, uh -huh. is there any ongoing reoccurring theme that you see over and over again that kind of locks or blocks women from moving towards the goals that they're trying to achieve? That you yeah. just like, yeah. So the thing that comes up all the time. And so I actually created a program just to address this one issue because I was seeing it come up all the time. It's that women put everyone else's needs and happiness before their own. And so what's happening is that a lot of us, we've gotten so out of touch with what we want and what our purpose is and our calling and how we are personally fueled up and what we need because our energy is always on other people. Mm. And that I have seen is the core, 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 core of with women um, who I work with who struggle with weight. And because when we're just giving, 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 and there's nothing for us, the only thing we're doing for ourselves is eating. Yes. And there's just, if you, if we take that away, we have nothing. And so that's why it just feels impossible to right. stick to like diet. Right. Like you're not going to strip away the one place you're the getting pleasure thing. in your life. It's yeah. like, that chance, buddy, it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. I will rest just, you, wrestle you for those Doritos. <laughs> exactly. And so I find the biggest need for women is to have fun, um, because that is like to a lot of us the most selfish in a good way, like self expressed mm -hmm. um, period for us, like in that hour that we're just doing something for us. But we are so enmeshed with our family system and our community and our friends and our parents and our siblings that we just don't even know what that is anymore. And it's really sad. And I think what's important to realize is that. That used to be helpful, you know, just like we were talking about culture and the way it used to be, that used to be our role, to, you know, to hold the community together was to put ourselves last, mm -hmm. to keep society going. But like, we're good. Society is implanted. Right. And <laughs> there's just, there's a new need for women to really listen to their hearts and their souls and live from that place. Because that's really how we're now going to evolve as a race yeah. um, is by setting that example for our children. So good. So good. Yeah. I love that too. Setting that example. And, um, and that you said, ha when you said, you know, having more fun, it's like the first thing that came to my mind is this idea of, right, you're literally like saying, lighten up, go have more lighten fun. Up. Lighten up. Yeah. Right? Is it, yeah. And isn't that, we know, right? Lighten in the mind, lighten in the body. It's all a sense. It's all energy. Um, so, so good. So here, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. If somebody is just in a moment, right? So I'm in a moment and I am in that binge overeating, like it's happening moment, right? I'm not, you know, I haven't put all my tools in place yet. Let's say, do you have a tool or a tip or a technique that someone could use in a moment to possibly avoid going into a complete, like, throwdown session where they know the end result is not going to really be what they truly want. Yes. So this is what I did in order for me to get out of my, my binge pattern. Um, I would plan what I was going to go eat and I would put it on a plate. That's key to like not be in your refrigerator. Standing. So I'd put like a whole sleeve of Oreos on a plate and put it on my counter and I'd set a timer and I'd say, I'm going to go do something for fun for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to come back and eat the cookies. And so I would literally set a timer on my phone. I gave myself full permission to come back and eat all the Oreos. And I would go for a walk or call a friend or read a book or like watch a funny TV show. And just to break the 
um, cause you get this, I don't know if you've ever been a binge. Oh yes, absolutely. But it's like, it's like <laughs> you know, it's all, it's, you're just, it's this like opiate addiction. It's like something it's is coming to, through. It's like, I'm not even, you don't even feel like I'm you're not driving the train. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I would just interrupt the behavior by going and doing something without saying no to the food. That's really key. And then for the first couple of times, I would come back and eat all the cookies. And then after a while, I'd have like four. And then I wouldn't want them anymore because I realized that I would feel so much better after those 15 minutes of fun than I did after eating the cookies. But if we never have the comparison, if we never know what it feels like to go have fun when we want to eat, then we just believe that the food is the best hit we can get. Um, right. So in the moment, I think that is, that is the best thing you can do. It's just like, just go do something else. Right. And cre- I mean, really it's creating a pause, like you said, or interrupting uh. a pattern. So you're creating a pause, yeah. creating, uh, and, and seeing, you know, I do think, I mean, this is a whole other conversation where I won't dive into it deeply, but I do think a big part for so many women is learning how to be with a feeling or an emotion without yes. having to um, move out of it, to, to get away from it, right? Mm-hmm. Like the ability to stay in an uncomfortable feeling and not want to bolt, right? Yes. Um, yes. But what, what, what you're saying is also, it, it takes that awareness of saying, okay, because like you just said, when you want to binge eat, a lot of times you don't feel like you are in control. You don't feel like, no. you know, sometimes you feel like, like as I think about it, sometimes you think, well, you don't feel like you could even stop if you wanted to stop, right? Mm-hmm. So it is just like you're saying, create that awareness to create space. It's interrupting the pattern, even if it's just for a moment, you know, and then it's a practice over and over again. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Okay. And then I don't want to keep you here all day. So I have one more question. Okay. If somebody who's out there watching us, listening to us right now is just really feeling it, like not coming from that place of self-love, you know, they're hating on their bodies. They're feeling very frustrated. They're hearing the words that we're saying and they're like, yeah, that's all good. But you know, how do I implement? How am I implementing? You know, what would you say is one baby step? One little thing they can literally do in this moment, you know, like today, right now, five minutes from now, mm-hmm. um, to just start to move in a direction or at least to, to release a little bit of the, the struggle. Yeah. So I call that place body jail. Yeah. Um, where we just feel like someone else has locked us in and we feel crazy around food and we feel crazy in our body and we just don't know where to go. Um, And I actually have a six-step workshop that everyone can go check out if you want to. It's at livemorewayless.com, but I'm going to give you the first step. Awesome. And that is to realize that you do not have a food problem. You do not have a body problem. You have a life problem. And what's so interesting is that when we can actually call it what it is, I have Mm -hmm. a life problem, all of a sudden you can see it. Yeah. You know, um, it's like, oh, like this happened to me last week. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but I was getting all like caught up in my body and my food and cause it still happens. Of course. I mean, uh, you know, of course. And, um, I was feeling crazy about it and like, I, you know, I wanted to do this for dinner, but we ended up getting takeout instead. And I thought I was going to go to the gym the next day and I didn't. And I was feeling in that stuck place. And I just said to myself, Sarah, you don't have a food problem. You don't have a body problem. You have a life problem. What's going on? And all of a sudden I could see it so clearly that I just, I had all these intentions around working less and I'd been working a lot the past two weeks. Uh, with two kids and under two. With two kids under two. And a husband going through a uh, crazy residency. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so, and all of a sudden it took me two seconds where I had been belly aching about the food and the body stuff for like three days. So just tell yourself what's going on in my life because if, it's like we're looking for that the whole time, but we're looking at the food and it's just not computing in yes, our brain because yes, it's yes. not true. So that's the key. And then there's a lot of other really great stuff that you can accomplish Which in just 24 program? hours. Sorry, what oh, is that it's called Get Out of Body Jail. But if you go to livemorewayless.com, it comes right up. Okay. I'll, and I'll leave these links down so people yeah, and can And it's all free. Yeah, um, that's awesome. It's a great 60-minute workshop. 
And it's just meant to get you out of that struggle that we oh, get. That's taught. such a great resource. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I don't welcome. I don't know if I knew about that. I'm definitely going to, I'll put that down oh, below. Check it out. Right. Again. And it's that shift. And I think it's like you're saying, when you say that to yourself, you're shifting yourself mm-hmm. out of this place of like shame and there's something wrong with me and da 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 to, Ooh, let's like zoom out a little. There's something else going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I always like to say is that, you know, a lot of times what we're trying to fix can't be fixed on our plate. Like steamed chicken and broccoli isn't going to make you, <laughs> right. you know, right. enjoy the, whatever it is, whatever, wherever it is, whatever void or whatever place you need to be filling up in your life, you know, it's not necessarily going to happen with a salad. So yes, exactly. knowing that and practicing that. So I wish we had, I wish I had live people here. I feel like people would have so many questions for you. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being here. Let's, uh-huh. um, thank you. let's share. I just want you to share one more time. So it's live more way mm-hmm. and also Sarah right. Correct. And you do yeah. a, a, a weekly news like blog. I do. Right? Yep. I do a weekly newsletter. And I really, it's a, it's a combination of me just being really real about what's going on with yes, me that's what I love. and, um, pulling a lesson from it. Yes. From people. Love that. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what I love about your work. Like I said oh, before, thank it's you. real down to earth and you are a great communicator. Like every, I read your stuff and I'm like, yes, I've done, I've either been there or I can completely relate to it. And I think, yeah. you know, most women can. So thank you so much you. for being here. I think that this is going to value a lot of people. So Oh, you thanks Danny, so much for having me. It was such a pleasure to be here. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this now and then I'll do my own little outro. So we'll chat in a minute. I mean, can you guys see why I love her so much? She is so down to earth and so refreshing and I feel like I could really chat with her all day long. So I am going to put all the links that we mentioned down in the description box below. So if you guys are interested in checking any of that out, it'll be there waiting for you. So now I wanna hear from you guys. Did anything we spoke about resonate with you? Did you have any little mental revelations or aha aha moments? If you did, come on down to the comments below and share, even if you have a question or a thought. Absolutely love chatting with you guys down there. So go on down there and let me hear what's inside your brain. In the meantime, I want to thank you for being here. I am Danny Spees, and I'll see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness.